Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. Now in this series of videos, I'm going to be recording a song on the iPad using GarageBand. Now the catch here is that this song is going to be four tracks in total. So the challenge is, can I produce a song using just the equipment I have here on just four tracks? I have my iPad Air 2 here. I have a Steinberg UR12 interface over here. I have another video which you can check down below which shows you how I set all of this up. I have a large diaphragm condenser, the MXL550, and a pop filter here. I have my acoustic guitar, uh, and I have a mic stand and a pop filter here. So that is it. So all of the tracks I'm recording, I'm gonna be using this one microphone, this one guitar, this one voice, and hopefully by the end of four tracks, we'll have a song. Now the song is already written and I'll be recording, I'll be tracking and recording the entire song here, one track at a time. Okay, so let's get ourselves set up to record our very first track. So I've just hit create new song here and the first track I want is an instrument track. So I'm gonna tap on instrument. It will default to this nice room which is not actually a bad sound to record to. So I'm gonna track with this on. It's just got a little bit of reverb and a little bit of compression added to the sound. So I'm happy with that. But first of all, what I have to do is actually set up my song. So I'm going to actually put in some sections which are gonna help me know what part of the song I'm up to and help with the editing process and set up things like the time signature and the tempo. So let's do that now. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to do my sections. So if I tap on the little plus sign up here, I can actually set my first section, which is actually going to be two bars in length. And this is so that I have two bars of lead in before the actual performance starts in case there's a little bit of sound that goes just before that very first beat. I don't wanna get that cut off. So I'm gonna now add my second section, which is going to be eight bars of intro. I'm going to add a third section, which is gonna be 22 bars, uh, which my first verse, I've then got a second verse, which is going to be 18 bars. So we're gonna add 18 bars here. Then got our chorus, which is going to be 16 bars. We then have our interlude of just four bars. Verse three, which is going to be 18 bars again. We're nearly there. We're gonna do the chorus two, which is going to be another 16 bars. And then our outro, which is actually going to be 25 bars long. So we have all of our sections laid out here. This will just give our our song a little bit more structure when we go to record all the sections. So I'm gonna tap all sections here because when I first track, I want it to make sure it goes through the entire song and we're not just recording it section by section. Now, what we now need to do is set up a couple more things. We need the tempo. So the tempo for this particular song is 114 beats per minute. And we also wanna set the time signature, which for this one is in D major. Now the time signature, because I'm using all live instruments. I'm not using any virtual instruments for this song, at least at this stage of the planning. We don't particularly need that to be on. Um, we don't need the key signature, but it's a good habit to get into in case you did want to add any sort of uh, a synth pad or something, uh, then it's already ready and raring to go. So we're now ready to actually do the recording. So what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to adjust my microphone, make sure that the setting on the preamp is at the right level, and then I'm going to run through a pass of this song. Now this is going to be the low guitar, so the rhythm guitar uh, part, as well as uh, an accompanying vocal. So I'll be recording those at the same time, and I'll just need to position myself near this, uh, this microphone to make sure that picks me up as best it can. Not 100% happy, so I'm just going to stop, undo, and we'll start this again. Okay, we will stop again. 
because what I'm noticing is that my input, I am definitely peaking and peaking is not a good thing. So we need to turn down. I've just backed off the gain on the preamp a little bit. And we still have too much coming through. And you can see by my waveform there that, yeah, that is too aggressive. We can't have the first track looking like that. So we're going to undo and drop our preamp volume down and try again. Okay, that's uh, sounding a lot better. What I am going to do, though, is put up the output. Sorry, I'm right on the microphone there. So I'm going to turn the output up because that's not actually going to affect the sound so that we can't clip it with the output but the input is where we need to make sure that that is set correctly on our interface so that we are not going to be clipping i think we may have found the sweet spot here so let us try that one more time okay so just going to check that. I did make a small mistake there, so let's see if we go back. So our waveform's looking a little bit better. I'm just going to have a quick listen back. Okay, I have undone it again. We are trying to get it right at the source, after all. So, what I'm going to do here is actually just adjust the microphone again. I'm getting a little bit too much of my voice and not enough guitar. And the voice is really supposed to sit in the background. So I'll do another quick adjustment and we'll try another take. That's sounding better. Let's go with it. Okay, so the transition there wasn't good to this final section. So I'm just going to pop out and find the spot. And we'll go from here. I'm going to, we don't need to actually do a split because we're just gonna overdub. We're gonna overdub directly from here. I've forgotten to sing. Let's try that again. And again. Alrighty. Now, yes, an abrupt ending there, but the song's actually going to uh, fade out at the end there, so we don't actually need all of those parts. And there, we pretty much have it. Okay, so there we have our first foundation track. Now, I can't promise I'm going to keep that performance of that track, but at least we have all of the parts there in all of the sections, and we can now record over our uh, other tracks and start building this song up. I'm now going to be recording the second guitar track, which also has some background vocals as part of it. Again, when you've got four tracks, you need to utilize each track as much as you possibly can. So let's jump in and record our second track. I'm going to hit the plus and go another instrument track. And I'll leave it again defaulted to the nice room sound, um, which is a nice slight bit of reverb, good for tracking. I'm going to turn the output up here and what I'm also going to do is, I'm going to slide this out. Okay, so I'll slide out so I can adjust the volume because what I want to do is put the volume of this first guitar back down a little bit so I'm going to be able to hear myself track. 
Uh, let's just give this a go, and if the levels don't sound right or it's not working, I'll stop. But uh, fingers crossed, we might be able to just go with it. Missed a backing vocal there, so I'm just going to zoom back and fix that up. Okay, I'm going to do it from this uh, interlude section because I didn't like the way I played that. And this is where my sections come in handy. I can see exactly that I'm just at this two bar interlude section. So I'm going to hit record and make sure I'm ready to. Alright, we're good. And there we go, once again, not a perfect take by any means. Sorry, I don't have a pop filter on this microphone, so apologies for the plosives. But we do have two nice healthy tracks there, all lined up with our original guidelines that we had with our sections, and I'm now ready to move on and lay down my lead vocals. Today I'm recording the lead vocal overdubbing that on top of these two guitar tracks. Let's go. Now I just need to adjust the microphone and the stand and the filter to make sure we're all good to go. And then I will be adding our third guitar, our third track to this recording. Check one, two, that is looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna carefully reach over all of this uh, stands and equipment to hit the new track. And we're gonna now add voice track. And this lead vocals one, I don't really like the sound of, so I'm going to change this to, not the fun, I'm going to go through the punchy presence. Now when you're, you'll notice here that I actually have monitoring off on this, so I'm actually not hearing any of the effects anyway, so it's actually irrelevant which, which one I put on, but that's the one I tend to put on by default. Uh, the reason is that I'm not actually monitoring through the interface, I'm plugging in through the interface on my PC and monitoring through that using the direct monitor. Means that there's virtually zero lag and whilst I don't hear the effects while I'm tracking, um, I can both record this so that you can hear it with the video and I can actually uh, track and hear the overdubbed tracks at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my volume up so that I can hear my voice better and go to my tracks and drop down those guitar tracks. So let's just have a quick listen in a loudish spot. See what it sounds like. And up new. Okay, I'm just checking that I don't need to adjust and make sure that I'm not clipping, but I have enough volume coming through. Okay, let us go to the start of this song and I'll see if I can get a, an entire take through here. Um, I'm going to leave the metronome on. Sometimes I track vocals with the metronome on, sometimes off. I'm going to do it with it on to start with and see how that goes and we might have to try it with it off afterwards if it doesn't work so well. You say the time is gone, gone, blah, blah, blah. Already stuffed up. Well that was a good start. Let's try again. You say the time is gone for good. Blah, 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 blah. And again. You say the 
the hope is gone and there is nothing left to comfort in the end and you say even when you're feeling good that something else will come around the bend and i'm always thinking always trying to hold on and it might be in my head but my heart is racing and i'm scared and i take There we go. That one was okay, but not great. The things I noticed here is that the metronome was annoying. It was a little bit too loud as well in my ears. So it's probably going to come through in the microphone. I uh, can probably do a better job without it. But let's just have a quick listen back and see what it sounds like in the mix. Third and always trying to. Okay, so I'm not super impressed and happy with how that's come along, but we have our three tracks down. So I'm going to move into the last last track, um, and I am going to have to re-record probably both guitars because you can hear there that the backing vocals are coming through a lot louder than they should. This is the final track, so this is track four and I'm recording some more backing vocals here today. So I'm doing the final harmony track for the lead vocal I recorded in the third video, and that will complete our four tracks. Let's go. So I'm going to go in here and add another vocal. And this one I'm just going to put on to fun and clean. Bump my mic. Uh, so it's just going to be a, a clean vocal recording that's going to go in because this is just our backing vocal and we can enhance it and add something in afterwards. So what I am going to do at this point in time is, so our metronome is going to go off in this one and I'm actually going to do a little bit of panning with these guitars because the intention is, what, what I'm hearing at the moment is everything's right up the middle and it's making it sound very... Everything's competing with everything else. So I'm just going to do a quick move here. I'm going to hit up here. I'll tap on, not the effects, but that button there. And I'm going to, so I'm going to pan that guitar track quite far to the left. And I'm going to do the same with this guitar track, pan it quite far to the right. So what I'll actually do, if I'll make sure this is working, I'm going to solo and play this guitar there we go so you'll be hearing that guitar over on more to the left hand side and this one here if we un solo that's the wrong button take the solo off and always trying to hold on and so that's just giving us a little bit more separation on those tracks which will make it easier to track 
this next vocal pass. Okay, so let's jump into it and record. You say the time for hope is gone and there is nothing left to comfort in the end. Always trying to hold on. And okay, terrible, terrible start. We'll try that again. You say the time for hope is gone and there is nothing left to comfort in the end. And you say even when you're feeling good that something else will come around the band. And I'm wrong And it might be in my head But my heart is racing and I'm scared And I'm gonna stay but you can go I'm gonna stay but you can go I'm gonna Walk stay right but you can go I'm gonna stay but you can go I'm gonna Walk stay right but you can go I'm gonna stay but you can go well, that's a thing. Not particularly impressed with any of these four tracks. We've got a lot of work to do, but we have the base of a song. And what I'm going to be doing today is going through the tracks, doing any overdubs that I may need to do, and doing any basic editing so that I've got four nice, clean tracks ready to mix and ready to do my final production. Now, confession time. After the last video where I recorded the fourth track, I was not very happy with any of them. Something about uh, recording in front of a camera and in an awkward position, perhaps. Uh, that's my excuse anyway. I'm sticking to it. But... What I have actually done is re-recorded all of these tracks. So it's the same song, the same parts. I have tweaked a couple of things a little bit and I think it's come together pretty well. So in this video, I was going to go through and, uh, and do some overdubs. You can probably see here already, I have already recorded a few parts again, but the majority of this was pretty much all in one take. And when I say one take, I did about three or four takes, but it was the the best overall take. I didn't want to spend hours comping together three, four, five takes. Uh, it's a bit of a diminishing returns thing that uh, it was. it's close to where I want it now. What I've done so far is, you can see I've got our four tracks here. The top track here is the original uh, guitar that I recorded with the low harmony vocal. So if we slide out and just solo this one, yeah, this is a track that sounds a bit like this. And what I've done with this so far is just pushed it over here to the left and just adjusted the volume. There's been a few little tweaks that I made to the default settings here uh, on the compressor and the, the reverb just to sweeten it up a little bit before we go into the final mixing phase. But when we get to the mixing, I'll show what I have so far and we might be doing a few tweaks there then. So if we go to the second track now and we'll change the solo. The same thing here. This is the high guitar part with the slightly higher vocal backing as well. So some of the um, accompanying vocals. So this part sounds a bit like this. And you can hear there that the vocals aren't exactly spot on um, because playing and singing backing vocals at the same time is something I find quite challenging and getting the mic position right where it was a good balance between the two was also a bit of a challenge. So again, when it all comes together in the mix, it's sounding pretty good and with some volume automation and a few other bits and pieces that I'm going to do in the mixing phase, I think it's going to come together nicely. Third track here is our main backing vocal and we'll 
change that over here. And once again, just trying to hang on. Hard to see this fear. And again, <laughs> you can hear that uh, there's a few notes there that aren't exactly perfectly spot on. When it comes together in the mix, it's it does sound okay. Um, and once again, it's the how many takes do I want to do? How many vocals do I want to comp together? So I'm not settling, I guess, for a low standard, but I'm also not going to spend my time on something that gets uh, that is really much an, an accompaniment. What you'll also hear in that version is that there's a very faint tapping in the background, which was literally me tapping along on a box. And I've added that because whilst there's no percussion in this track, I really wanted that driving uh, hit on all of the beats as a bit of a background to the track. So you can barely hear it, especially in the full mix, but it just kind of gives you that little bit of a tick on the, the first, second, third, fourth beat, beats, and I think makes the, the track a little bit more polished. Finally, the other vocal track here. So this is the main lead vocal and sounds like this. Trying to hang on and it's hard to and again, you can hear I've got some of the default settings from the compressor and the a little bit of EQ and a little bit of reverb on there just while I was recording and, and playing it back so that when I have the whole song together and I play it, it kind of just glues it together. It gives me a starting point. Um, originally, when I recorded, um, way back when, I would record everything 100% clean with zero effects with zero processing and I'd leave everything to the mixing phase. What I found though was that that made my performances dry and sterile and it meant that I had a whole heap of work to do at the mixing phase. Whereas now I've recorded these four tracks, I've done that little bit of sweetening as I've gone through and now the mix should actually come together quite quickly um, because the track already sounds okay. So here's what the track sounds like now. To see this might be wrong and it might be in my head. So that's my rough sort of static mix and that's what my starting point will be. So we have our four tracks recorded. We've done any editing that we needed to do. We've got four tracks that we're pretty happy with now. So now comes the time to sweeten the mix, to do the mixing and to get the final mastered version out of the iPad and into a format that we can distribute. So we're now at the phase where I'm going to do the final edits and mixing. What I'm going to do here is just go through some of the things that I am doing and will do, I'm not going to do the full mix because that's uh, going to take a lot longer than I'm going to show in this video. But what I will show is the techniques that I'm using to make sure that I can mix this and get a really good sound. The track itself, two guitars, left and right. So the first track here has, is over to the left with the lower vocal. So it's called Git plus low vox. Um, we've got the Git plus high vox, which is over to the right and panning, which we'll show you in a sec. We've got the background vocals and then we've got this last track and I've left this unnamed because I wanted to actually show how to name a track because it's a really good hygiene habit to get into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap and then tap again, tap on rename and then I can come in here and change this from its radio ready default uh, microphone setting and call this lead vox which I will do now. There we go. Okay, so we have our four tracks ready to go and what I'm going to do is just take a quick look at the settings that I currently have on each of these and do a few little adjustments. And the main adjustment that I wanna do is to actually fade this out at the end. So I'm gonna show you how to use automation. Um, once I've got the static volume at about the right level, we can automate to actually show how to fade out and also to drop down the volume in some of these sections as well. So we'll tap on our little icon up here to bring out the track settings. So as you can see here, we've got the volume set there. Our track pan is over about halfway to the left at the moment. And we've got some compression happening, but to actually see the main 
details here, we can tap into our plugins and EQ. So what we've got so far, we don't have a noise gate on because we had a pretty decent signal. We've got the compressor set at minus 20 on the threshold, ratio of 2.6 to 1. Uh, the attack time 17, uh, the gain, so we haven't actually had any makeup gain and we've got that compressor mixed at 100% at the moment. So some of the things that I'm going to look to do here is to maybe adjust that compressor. We can't in GarageBand unfortunately automate uh, the compressor, so we need to find a level where it's going to be about right for the whole song and then we can just use our fader, so our volume automation, to bring the volume up and down. So uh, one of the drawbacks, but not a massive thing because we still have that. Uh, we have the effect EQ, which is one of these default GarageBand as part, uh, has as part of the actual uh, recording setting, which we can either just turn on or off. So again, slight limitation, but we'll play with that and see if it sounds better with that on or off. We have the track reverb here. So at the moment, we have the settings as you can see there with the spread and the time. It's got a high cut. It's uh, got 30% of the wet and 90% of the dry signal in that reverb at the moment. So that's another thing that I'm going to play with and just adjust and, and play back a few times to get right. And then the visual EQ down the bottom here, if we tap on that, the moment there's no EQ on this, but what we can do is actually adjust the EQ for the low, the mid and the treble. So what I'll most likely be doing is doing cuts as opposed to boosting because what I'd want to do is find any frequencies that are really pushing out that I don't want and reduce those down. Again, it's only three bands that we have here and it's not exactly the most precise EQ, but it does give you the ability to just make those tweaks and carve out some space in the track. And then we have our gain over here so we can actually adjust the overall makeup gain. If we do do some cuts and we need to get some volume back in, we can do that here within the EQ. And we also have the ability to have the analyzer either on or off. So if we play. Hear that something else will go. So that analyzer will show us the waveform as we play the track. And then we can see what frequencies we have within there and make those adjustments. The same sort of setup we have here. So you can see we've got different settings for this second guitar. Um, just because it was a different... Uh, sound, it was a high guitar and the vocals were higher, so I've made some adjustments to the compression settings and the reverb settings that we have for this one. And I'm not sure if I, yep, so I haven't actually done any EQing yet. So that's another thing that I'll be working on to actually make sure that this track is sweetened up and that uh, everything is sitting nicely in the mix. Background vocals have the same sort of thing here. So we've got a lot of these plugins here, which have literally no settings, but just the ability to turn on and off, including things like enhanced tuning, which uh, the jury's out on for me. Uh, a lot of these automatic uh, configurations we have in GarageBand have uh, tuning enhancement. They have these stereo delays, these tape delays. Um, sometimes it sounds good to have them on, sometimes it doesn't. So it's a trial and error thing to turn those on and off, which I'll be doing as I go through just seeing what sounds the best and what's going to give the best overall sound for that particular track. And finally, the lead vocals. Again, we've got the similar sort of setup here. We've got the compressor and the track reverb settings. So just a little bit of reverb on that track and the same default settings down here that we have. So that's the main things that we'll be doing. I'll be doing here is going through and just getting a good static mix first of all, which I've kind of done with the faders. So I've got the right volume levels to where I think that they sound good together for the majority of the song. And then what I'm gonna do is adjust these, add any plugins that I need to. So I can actually add new plugins. If I tap on edit here, I can remove any of these and I can actually add in a new plugin. So if I did wanna add a different delay or something to the track, I can go ahead and do that there. And then, the most important thing, once I hit that stage, so let's just pretend that I have for the sake of this video, volume automation is gonna be the thing that I want to do here because there's some parts of this song where I really want to bring uh, the sound of either a guitar up or down or really push the vocals up when they're a bit quieter and drop them down a bit uh, in some other parts. So I'm gonna use an example uh, before I finish up here 
for volume automation because it's one of the things that people are really interested in doing and it's really relevant for this song. So for this particular track here, I'm gonna solo this guitar and low vocal track. And as we head towards the end of the song, just drop it into this spot here. I'll play this part and what you'll notice is that it's a quite a loud sort of lower frequency uh, part and then it changes to, uh, it goes right up the neck of the guitar and goes to quite a high melodic riff that ends the song. And it also has some background vocals and I wanna bring up the volume of both of those here at the end. So we'll play it back. So that part of the track, apart from that really bad cut, which I do need to do a little edit around. So I'll need to do a little fade out and in on this cut here, uh, where it goes from the one recording to the other. You may have heard a little click as it went through there. I'll then need to bring the volume up so that this is slightly higher. And then what I wanna do with all of these tracks at the end is actually fade them all out. So I want to do a gradual fade to fade all four tracks out as we go to the end. So what I need to do is tap on the track here, go to my automation, and a piece of advice, don't add any automation until you get to the end stage because once you have automated the volume, this fader will then become completely useless. You then have to do all volume adjustments here. So make sure you have your static mix right before you come in and do automation. So I'm going to pinch to zoom right in here. And the first thing I can see is this little spot here, which is that little click that we heard. So I'll just play that bit. You can hear that little click between the two recordings. So uh, I could just grab this and, well, I can't do it right now. I could just grab that and just pull that handle back and get rid of that part. But what I actually just gonna do here is for an example, I'm gonna turn on up the top there so I can add a volume automation point. I'm gonna tap once here beforehand, once right at the spot, and then once on here. And I'm gonna grab this middle one, grab this middle one, and I'm gonna pull it right down until it's barely audible. And then what I actually want is when it comes back in, I want it to actually be increased volume. I want that to happen right at the start there. So again, I can zoom, don't do what I did there. Undo is your friend. So I can take this across and then I didn't actually want this extra point so I can tap it to get rid of it. Uh, and now let's hear what this sounds like now that we've done that change. We'll hit done. has reduced the noise of that little click. I probably need to do a little bit more fine tuning to do that, but it's sounding okay. You can see we've got the little waveform in behind there. You can, sorry, the waveform, you can see the little automation curve that's been put in place. And the most important thing is that the volume has increased. So I'm just gonna play this a uh, little bit through so that you can hear the difference. So you can hear there that not only the guitar, but the vocals, which is what I really wanted to bring up, has increased in volume, which is really good. The final thing is that I said I wanted to fade out this song. So the final sort of version of, that's a repeating kind of passage there is. I'm gonna stay with you can go. I'm gonna stay with you can go. I'm gonna stay with you can go. I'm... It goes through till about there. If we just unsolo that. So that's the last walk right out the door goes to there. So we want the end volume to actually stop there. So what I want to do is I'm going to tap back on this waveform. I'm going to go back to my automation. And you can see here that 
that's the point where we want the volume to be zero. So I'm going to tap to create a point. Firstly, I'm going to turn that on. So that little uh, padlock there, just it locks you, which means you can't add a bunch of points accidentally. But once it's on, and now I tap, I'm going to get a point, not quite the spot I wanted. Need to just adjust it. So there it is. And then I need to drag that down. But what I actually want, I don't want it to start fading out from the very start. I want it to start fading out for about the last probably four, four or five bars. So I'll not do that. Missed it again and again. We'll drag that up and sit that back up at the same level at six plus six dB. And then it'll ramp down there. So if we play that now, we'll hit done. Hit play. Walk right out the There you go. So it goes right down to zero at the volume level. Now, what I do need to do is do this on every track. I'll actually do that at the end, but I'm going to just do it now and then probably undo it again, just to show you how that works and how that will sound. So unfortunately, there's no way to do a global fade down here unless I basically completed the track as it is and then pushed them all out into a separate stereo track and then faded that track. But it's probably easier to just do it right here in the mix. So what I'm now gonna do is not knock the iPad flying like I just did, but I'm going to unsolo that one again. And let's go through with each of these tracks and we'll just do a very basic automation move on each. Uh, I'm not perfectly lined up there. I'll need to just sort of tweak those and move those around, but you get the idea. I'm gonna hit done. We've now got volume automation on each of those tracks. And what I was saying before is, that we've now basically made these sliders useless. As soon as these sliders have a yellow circle around them, you can no longer actually use them to change the volume. You have to use automation. And that's so that you don't move everything and make it a, a volume that can't actually happen. So at the moment, this volume that goes down to zero, if I tried to move the slider down, it wouldn't be able to put the volume down lower than zero. So if you're wondering why it does that, that's the reason. Anyway, let's hear and see if this fade out actually works for this track. Walk right out the door. 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 not bad at all. So but you can see that in a couple of minutes we were able to add in those quick automation changes get that uh, fade out set up. And now uh, when I do the final mix down and export of the track, we're gonna have a nice fade at the end. What we need to do is just simply drag this over into Reaper and there is our AIF file. The first thing I'm gonna do is that you might recall I had these two bars of lead in at the very start of the track. So I'm just going to reduce some of that. We don't want that much time. We don't want it to be right up against here because you want a little tiny bit of lead in there. You don't want it to start straight away because some players will fade in or cut off the very start if we have it too close. But I'm going to cut there and then just delete this section. So we've done that very small edit and we have our song here. And if I hit play, You hear the very familiar sound of the song that we've been recording over the last six videos. So what I want to do with this track is a couple of very small moves to do the final master. So if we go and click on the FX button here, you can see that I already have these set up. And what I've got here is one EQ, so an equalizer, which is a parametric EQ, and I've got a master limiter as well. And that is it. And I do very light mastering because I'm 99% happy with the results I get out of GarageBand. All I really wanna do here is just to make sure that this final mastered version is going to sit nicely with other tracks that are mastered as well. So in terms of the EQ, you can see here that there are only three moves. We've got one low shelf down here at about 45 uh, hertz, 
and all that's doing is cutting off any of those low rumbling sounds. I live on a reasonably busy street, so we get buses and trucks and other things coming up and down the street, so I don't want any of those low rumbly sounds to be in my recording. I also do two small cuts here. So we've got one cut at about 270 hertz of less than one dB, and another cut at 500 hertz, again, just over one dB there. And all that's doing is just taking down the volume of some of those lower frequencies. So in this particular track, I was finding there was a bit of a buildup when I was listening back on my monitor speakers. I found that there was a little bit of buildup around those frequencies. So I've just pulled those down a little tiny bit. And the final EQ move I've done here is to enhance or to lift the frequency just at around about five kilohertz. And that's again, that high shelf has only gone up by just under one dB. So you can see very small moves there, nothing drastic. We're not changing the sound. We're just enhancing and making sure it's gonna sit nicely. The only other thing that I do when I'm mastering traditionally, and yes, you can do a whole lot more than this, but I wanted to keep this really simple, is to put a master limiter. So I just use, again, the default limiter that comes with Reaper. I set the threshold here just by listening back and working out where it needs to go. At the moment, it's at minus uh, 4.3, and then I've pretty much left every other setting at a default value, including the limit, which is at minus 0.1 dB. So what the limiter is going to do is it's going to bring that overall volume of the track from where it is at the moment, which is about minus 4 dB, up to right up to almost zero. So almost the point where it's going to clip, but we obviously don't want it to clip and go over and get distortion. We want it to sit just under there. So now that we've done those moves, we will close out of there and I'll find a section of the song around here, around the chorus, and I'm going to play it back and I will turn on these effects. So you can see it's red at the moment. When I turn on the effects, it's going to go green and you'll be able to hear the difference between the two sounds. My heart is racing and I'm scared And I take a breath and try to see So there you go, in my opinion at least, uh, the sound you're getting with that master version or with the effects on there, it's a little bit more present. Obviously it's got the volume there, but those small EQ tweaks has just sort of given it that tiny little bit of treble boost that's just sweet at the top end. And obviously cutting out some of those lower frequencies has just removed some of that uh, build up that we had down there. So for me, that is it. And I'm now done with the mastering process. let us go ahead and go to DistroKid. I've already got a membership here. DistroKid is $19.99 per year for unlimited releases. So it's, in my opinion, it's one of the best services. It's definitely affordable and it's very easy to use as you're about to see. So I'm gonna click sign in and I'm gonna enter my details. Look away while I do this, please. Okay, so I put in my details and clicked the sign in button and you can see here because I've already released some music using DistroKid, I have the two singles and the two EPs that I've previously released listed here and you can see the little logos showing all of the different platforms they've been released on from Spotify to Amazon, Apple Music to iTunes to Pandora. So all I have to do is upload my file once, put in the details about the song, and then DistroKid does the rest. It distributes those files and those songs to all of these different platforms, meaning that I don't have to do another thing. I just sit back and wait for it to start appearing in all the different services. So let's go ahead and upload this track now. I'm going to click on, not surprisingly, upload. And first I'm asked which stores I would like this to go to. I'm going to leave it with all of them because I can't see any reason not to have my music released on as many platforms as I can. But obviously you can choose those to be different if you want. The number of songs is one song, because this is a single, and the artist or band name I've got there as Pete Johns. Now the $19.99 a month is a single user artist account, and that means that I can only release songs under my own name. I can have a featured 
artist, so it can be Pete Johns featuring someone, but if I wanted to release another band's music, I can't do that using this platform. You can sign up for producer accounts and more involved accounts if you are gonna be releasing more music under different names. We can see that I'm already in iTunes, so it's said that yes, it's found Pete Johns and that this track will appear next to my other tracks in iTunes. The release date's defaulted to today, and it's asked me to consider upgrading. So again, the $19.99 per year means that I can only release things straight away. I can't release things in the future or choose a specific release date. I also can't do an iTunes pre-order or change the record label because again, those are premium services. So they're only small things for me. I'm not really that fussed about pre-orders or release dates or anything. I just want to put my file up there and then get the song out. So for me, that's all okay. The album cover, so I'm going to grab my album cover here and drag that over so that's going to upload there. So it tells you a, a bit more detail about what the optimal size is, 3000 by 3000, gives you some guidelines around what an album cover should and shouldn't have on it. Language is English, the genre, you get a primary and a secondary genre. So I'm going to choose singer-songwriter for the primary genre and I never quite know what my secondary genre is. You might argue that it's folk. I tend to put rock because despite the fact that my music's often not exactly rock these days, um, there's something about not putting some sort of rock or alternative there that makes me feel a bit sad. So I use rock as my secondary genre. The track title, so type in here very carefully to make sure that you spell your track title right because this is what's going to be submitted and I haven't got it wrong yet but apparently it's a little bit challenging if you get it wrong you have to remove it from the stores and then resubmit it and you're looking at uh, days if not weeks of turnaround time to do that. The songwriter, I wrote the song and it's an original tune. We can actually do a cover. It does cost more to release a cover. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's something like one dollar a month per cover song. So I have one cover song that I've released and it does cost you a bit extra because you have to, any money you earn from that, you have to pay royalties back to the artist. So explicit lyrics, no in this case. So I've got no sweary swears in my song. The iTunes price is set at 99 cents US. And again, with this standard platform, standard package, we don't have the ability to change that. We have to leave that at 99 cents, which here in Australia equates to $1.69. And depending what country you're in, it'll be whatever your base iTunes single price is. The audio file now. So we need to actually browse and find our file. So here it is. I'm just going to copy the location there. That way when I click browse, I can, oh, I'm already at the right spot. Handy. So there's our master file. We're going to click it and click open. And at this point, what I usually do is just go back to my master and give it a quick play just to make sure that I haven't done something crazy wrong. Let's just do that now. We're all good. So is it an instrumental song or not? This song contains vocals. It does indeed. Now, here's all the extra options. I haven't chosen any of these in the past and I won't be this time around, but obviously you get the add-ons and the opportunity to do those different things if you so desire. And then the important checkboxes. So I've selected YouTube Music as a store, so I don't want DistroKid, so I won't email DistroKid later asking why did you upload my music to YouTube. So again, they've obviously had people that have done that in the past, so they want to make sure that you're not gonna be asking why your music is on YouTube without you putting it there. Uh, I recorded this music and I'm able to sell it in stores. I'm not using any artist name, song titles or album title without their approval. And I have read and agree to the DistroKid distribution agreement. So now all that is left to do is click done and we are good to go. Okay, I've just done one final check of the files, the options, the spelling, and made sure everything's right. So, drum roll, let's click done and get this file happening. So it's now gonna go and verify. It's gonna upload my album artwork, which shouldn't take too long because it's just a JPEG file, and then it's going to upload the first and only, in this case, track, which is the master file that I uploaded. And that will take a while because that master file is a 
full resolution WAV file, which is around about 60 meg in size. So I'll let this go and do its thing and we'll come back once it's at 100% and we're all ready to roll. Okay, let's check back in on our progress and we are done. That was easy, wasn't it? Well, I think it kind of was. My single is uploaded. We have a option there, when will the single be released? And it says give stores two days to a week to push your album live. And it does say there that iTunes and Apple Music opens happens the same day. In my experience, it pretty much always has happened same day, usually within about four hours of the upload being completed. Your mileage may vary, so if you don't get it uploaded straight away, uh, it will be done within a day or two generally. And then you can go grab a link and start telling your friends to go and stream and buy your new single. So if I then click on the check on the status, we get a nice little scrolling shot of the artwork there. And it says here that the song and artwork is being processed and it takes about two to three minutes per song and ensures that everything is delivered just the same way. The artwork's good, the song's processing and just telling me that I get 100% of the proceeds, which is nice. So any money that this makes, uh, the few dollars and cents from the streaming that people may do on this track is going to come back to me. And the fee that I pay to DistroKid just covers them distributing for me the actual royalties that I earn from this. 100% of those come back to me, which is a nice thing to happen. And so now if I go back to my music, we will see that I have this little yellow light here, which means we're processing. So this single now is going to be added to my list of distributed songs. And so within the next day, this will start popping up on all of the different services. And as that happens, I will add the links in the description below so that you can go and check, those, check out the song if you would like to hear the final version of the song. The only way that your art is going to get out there is if other people can listen to it and appreciate your music. So thank you again. Until next time, take care.